Today we're looking at a development deep beneath the Pacific Ocean, one that scientists have been tracking with growing interest. New data from the seafloor observatories along the Juan de Fuca Ridge indicate that the magma chamber beneath Axial Seamount, an undersea volcano located about 250 miles off the Oregon coast, is showing a level of pressure and inflation higher than what researchers typically expect during its normal cycles. Axial Seamount is not just any volcano. It's one of the most active submarine volcanoes in the world and the most closely monitored volcano in the Pacific Northwest. What makes today's update unusual is not simply the inflation itself, but the rate of that inflation and what it might suggest about the volcano's internal processes. Axial Seamount sits on a spreading ridge where the Pacific Plate and the Juan de Fuca Plate are moving away from one another. As these plates pull apart, magma rises to fill the gap, creating new oceanic crust. This process is usually slow and predictable, but Axial Seamount is unique. Its magma chamber reacts more dynamically to these tectonic forces, causing regular inflation and deflation cycles that sometimes end in eruptions. In 1998, Axial had its first confirmed eruption then again in 2011, and most recently in 2015. All three eruptions were preceded by steady pressurization of the magma system beneath it, pressurization that looked very similar to what scientists are now observing again. But there's a detail in the latest readings catching extra attention. The magma chamber appears to have reached or even exceeded a pressure threshold similar to what was seen shortly before previous eruptions. Now, to be clear, that does not automatically mean that another eruption is imminent. Axial doesn't always erupt exactly when it reaches these levels. Sometimes the volcano continues to inflate without releasing that pressure immediately. But crossing these thresholds has historically been a sign that the system is entering a more active period. Let's break down what this threshold actually means. Axial seamount has a baseline, the level at which its magma chamber sits after an eruption. Over time, as magma refills the system, the volcano inflates, and the seafloor above it rises. Scientists monitor this uplift with pressure sensors, tilt meters, and GPS-style instruments placed directly on the ocean floor. Since the last eruption in 2015, Axial has gradually reinflated, but in the past year, that inflation has accelerated, reaching levels slightly higher than what models predicted. The magma chamber is essentially storing more melt than expected, and the chamber walls are expanding in response. This is why researchers use words like exceeded or surpassed when describing the current measurements. According to the data, the volcano has entered the range where, in previous cycles, it was already preparing for an eruption. But here's where things get more interesting and more complicated. Axial seamount is part of a bigger tectonic story that stretches across the entire Pacific Northwest. The region is shaped by the Juan de Fuca Plate, a small plate that is slowly being consumed under the North American Plate. This process drives the Cascadia subduction zone, the same fault responsible for major earthquakes in the geological past. Now Axial Seamount sits west of this zone, on the opposite side of the Juan de Fuca Plate. What makes it valuable to scientists is that it acts like a pressure gauge for the entire ridge system. When the plate spreads faster or undergoes stress changes, Axial reacts. Lately, there's been a noticeable increase in tectonic activity along the Ring of Fire, from Alaska to Japan to the Southwest Pacific. Axial Seamount doesn't directly cause or respond to far-off eruptions, but these events highlight a broader pattern. Many volcanoes around the Pacific Rim have become more active over the past two years. So researchers have been asking a key question. Is Axial's accelerated inflation simply part of its natural cycle, or is it responding to shifts occurring throughout the broader plate system? The answer isn't simple, but it's telling. Axial's inflation trend lines show that the volcano is behaving slightly differently than it did before the 1998, 2011, and 2015 eruptions. The uplift is happening faster this time, and the seismic patterns surrounding the volcano show more persistent low-level tremor, consistent with magma movement deeper in the system. One of the most critical elements scientists watch is the depth at which this magma is accumulating. 
The main magma reservoir is thought to sit roughly 1.5 kilometers below the seafloor, but there are signs that magma is rising into shallower pockets, smaller chambers that can warm and weaken the rock above them. This is where Axial becomes particularly fascinating. Undersea volcanoes behave differently than land volcanoes. When they erupt, the massive pressure of the ocean suppresses explosive activity. Instead, Axial typically spreads lava flows across the seafloor in long, thin sheets. These flows can cover huge areas in a short period, but because everything happens underwater, the event often goes unnoticed until sensors detect the sudden deflation that follows. This is why monitoring is essential. The 2015 eruption was detected almost in real time thanks to new instruments installed the year before. This kind of monitoring is what makes today's update especially important. With high-resolution pressure sensors tracking every fluctuation, scientists can measure seafloor uplift with precision down to the millimeter. Right now, those sensors are showing something clear. The volcano is pressurizing at a faster rate than normal, and the chamber has reached a stage similar to pre-eruption phases in its recent history. Another element scientists are analyzing is the pattern of micro-earthquakes near the volcano. When magma moves, it creates small swarms, tiny shifts that indicate melting rock is forcing its way upward. Axial has been producing slightly elevated microquake activity, but not enough to suggest magma is on the immediate move toward the surface. This is where the interpretation becomes nuanced. Inflation alone doesn't predict an eruption. Microquakes alone don't predict an eruption. Heat flow alone doesn't either. It's the combination and the rate of change that matters. Currently, Axial's inflation is rising steadily, its magma chamber is expanding, and its seismic background noise has increased. These combined factors make the volcano noteworthy right now, prompting researchers to issue updated assessments. One of the biggest questions is how an axial eruption would affect the Oregon coast. The truth is, an axial seamount eruption is not the same as an on-land eruption like Mount St. Helens or Mount Rainier. Because axial is underwater and far from shore, most eruptions go unnoticed outside the scientific community. The most significant effects usually involve changes to seafloor ecosystems, new hydrothermal vents, and shifts in ocean chemistry. However, major eruptions can send pressure waves through the water column and in rare cases can produce very small local tsunamis, but nothing capable of reaching the Oregon coast with destructive force. The primary impact is scientific, not societal, clears throat. Still, the volcano is important because it tells us how magma behaves in this plate boundary setting. If Axial is becoming more active, it may reflect broader changes along the Juan de Fuca Ridge changes that help scientists model long-term tectonic behavior in the region. Right now, the key takeaway is this. Axial Seamount's magma chamber is more pressurized than expected, the seafloor is rising, and the volcano is behaving in a way that historically precedes its eruptions. This does not mean an eruption is guaranteed or imminent, but it does mean the volcano is entering a period of elevated activity, one that researchers are monitoring closely. Axial is unique, because it gives us a window into processes that normally stay hidden deep beneath the ocean floor. Every uplift cycle, every tremor, and every eruption teaches scientists something new about how Earth's crust forms and evolves. Whether or not the current pressure buildup results in a new eruption, the data being collected right now is some of the most valuable anywhere along the Pacific Northwest's volcanic systems, and it raises the next big question. One scientist will be discussing throughout the coming months. How close is Axial Seamount to its next cycle?